Well, hello and welcome to our devotion time. It's great to be with you today. We are continuing our story of Abram and his journey with the Lord. And it really has just begun. If you remember our past, Abram was stuck in Haran with his father. His father dies and then God calls him to, uh, gives him the call that his father had to go to this land that I will show you his um, uh, nephew Lot goes with him in an entourage. They go at, to the border of the promised land. They get to the Canaan area, looks in, there's a drought. And, uh, and so he doesn't see the land in its prettiest stage. There's a, a lot of things going on uh, in, in uh, Canaan land at, at this time. And so Abram, as we will discover here, decides to uh, pack up and go south, go towards Egypt. And I want us to notice here, if you read this story on your own, that Abram doesn't ask God, should I go down to Egypt? He just decides to pack up and go that way. Well, he knows the reputation of Egypt. He knows that there is a land that, that's fertile. Uh, you know, it's called the Fertile Crescent and, and the breadbasket of the world at, at that time. Uh, it, it produced most of the food for the world. And because uh, the two rivers there and the, the soil was was rich, it was it was able to produce food in, at an incredible rate. And he goes that way, but he knows the reputation of Egypt as well as as beautiful as it is, as a uh, as, as pretty a, a vacation spot as it, it could be. He knows that it, it's full of of uh, snake pits as well. That that there's a a lot of ugly in Egypt as well. But he he thinks, I think sadly, he has a, a snake charmer in his back pocket, and that snake charmer is his wife, Sarah, and, and her beauty. And so he, he decides to use Sarah to, um, to um, make his way in Egypt. Uh, and and um, the scriptures say this, that, that Abraham turns to his wife and, and speaks to her, Behold, you are a beautiful woman, when the Egyptians see you, they will assume that you are my wife and kill me, allowing you to live. Say that you are my sister, that uh, they will then be good to me for your sake, and through your efforts my life will be spared. And you'll find this story in Genesis chapter 12 uh, in the midst of uh, verse 11 through 13. Now, I didn't write this dialogue. I'm just reporting what's said, and I'll I confess to you that I'm not very comfortable with this. Abraham is selling out Sarah. Uh, and, and now we don't walk in, in Abram's sandals. We don't know what was going on in his mind. And, and, and to tell the truth, Abram's probably right. If, if uh, the Pharaoh wanted Sarah, he, he could kill Abram. That, that, that there was not enough strength in, in Abram to defend himself and his entourage uh, from the Egyptian army, from Pharaoh. And, uh, and I assume that's, Abram said, this is my only way out. But, but he's selling Sarah's virtue. He, he's, um, it's almost like what we're seeing played out in America now. With the, we hear stories of the slave trade that, that's going, that's rampant in our nation. We hear stories of how Hollywood um, takes advantage of, of uh, young women and I assume young men as, as well um, uh, to, to use and abuse to, for them to, to gain wealth in, um, in the nation or for themselves that, uh, that they, they sell their, their virtue, uh, some willingly, some unwillingly. Um, but, but we hear all of these stories and it's being played out right here in the Old Testament with us as well. Sarah's virtue is being, being um, um, played with, being, being um, sold out. And um, we think, oh, what's God going to do to Abram for even thinking this way? But, but he does. And, and, and it seems at first that, that God doesn't do anything. Now he will. We'll continue reading uh, the Abram's story, and, and God's going to deal with this. But, it, but it's just not right now, not in, in our time today. As a matter of fact, we'll look today, and it looks like Abram just gets blessed beyond measure. And, and he does. Um, it's like Abram's just in the midst of the, 
the stage of blessing and, and God dealing with this ugly, ugly uh, story just doesn't happen yet. But instead, uh, Abram sells Sarah to Pharaoh's uh, um, harem. And, and, uh, he, he, and there's a, a price to, the, to that. And, he, and, and he, he's blessed beyond measure because of Sarah. But the amazing thing is God continues to bless Abram and uh, I think protect Sarah's virtue. As we read the story, God sends a plague on Egypt. And haven't we heard that story before? 400 years from now, uh, or somewhere around that, um, uh, once again, Egypt has some plagues, and, and they're going to do the same thing that we see in this story. So a plague comes to Pharaoh. Pharaoh finds out that, um, that he's taken Sarah as his uh, wife in, in a harem, and God is not uh, pleased with that. And, um, and we read in, in Genesis 12, around verse 16, He treated Abram well because of her, and Abram uh, thus acquired sheep, cattle, donkey, male and female slaves, she donkey, and camels. And so because of, of uh, God disciplining Pharaoh with this plague, he, he gives Abram wealth. And then in uh, verse 20, Pharaoh says, put, uh, Pharaoh put his men in charge of Abram, and they sent him on his way along with his wife, and all that, that he was his. And, and so... Um, and again, we're going to see this story with Moses and the exodus of the Israelites. These plagues come. A lot of wealth is poured into um, Abram, just like the uh, Israelites with exodus to, I assume, to fund the journey that, that's ahead. But they're like, get out of here. You're, you're nothing but trouble. You're a curse to us. And, uh, and Abram is militarily escorted out of the land uh, to the border. Get out. Don't come back. Uh, is kind of the idea, and and we see um, God move in in the messes that we create, in the the messes of, in the sin, brokenness of, of countries as well, um, and and um, and we see Abram just like the children of Israel um, with Moses being told, "Get out, go out from us," uh, but again they get the wealth. Uh, but they're, they're sent back out to the promised land, the place where God originally intended them to go. You, you, you took a, a wrong turn here, Abram. Turn around, go back. Go back to the land I showed you. It might not look like much now, but there's a purpose for that. There's a reason that it doesn't look like much now. Don't trust your eyes. Trust my voice. Trust my leading instead. And I think that's our lesson today. And, and we, we want to trust God. We want to uh, go to this land that, that he's promised. But, the, but then when we look, look at where we're heading, it doesn't look fun. It doesn't look comfortable. And we, we, we have this tendency, this temptation to, to turn around. But we're going to turn around into a mess. And uh, we don't want to do that. And so let's continue to uh, get that advice from the, the Old Testament here as we continue to study Abram's story. But I'm going to stop here today with Abram, and uh, we'll continue uh, later. Uh, I hope to see you Wednesday with our Bible study. We're doing Passover. I'm doing the Passover meal right now and just reading the, the, uh, the text to that. And, but I think it's a wonderful story, a great way to get ready for Easter that's just around the corner here. Um, but then eventually we're going to get into the book of Ephesians and study that together. But uh, please come back Wednesday. If not, uh, Friday we'll continue Abram's story together. Well, you have a great week. I pray God's blessings, his peace be with you. Bye now.